Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. On Thursday, August 3rd, Pope Francis arrived at Parque Eduardo 7, in Lisbon, Portugal to attend the welcoming ceremony of the 37th World Youth Day, with over 500,000 youth. After a few laps in the Pope Mobile among the youth, the welcome ceremony began with a song and a short welcome from the Patriarch of Lisbon, His Eminence Cardinal Manuel Clemente. This was followed by the welcome program for the young people, the bringing in of the flags, the cross and the World Youth Day icon. The choir and orchestra of World Youth Day 2023, made up of 210 singers and 100 musicians from all the dioceses of Portugal. There are also the Mouse K Cantum, a choir which, during the week of World Youth Day, is composed of six deaf people. Pope Francis said when God calls you by name, it means that you are not a number to him, but a face. God loves you. At this World Youth Day, the Pope said, let us help one another to recognize this fundamental reality, may these days be vibrant echoes of God's call of love. Yet, above all, it is Jesus who called you here, let us thank Jesus with another round of applause. You are not here by accident. The Lord has called you, not only in these days, but from the very beginning of your days. He called you by name. Let us listen to the word of God that called us by name. Try to imagine these three words written in large letters. Then consider that they were written within you, on your hearts, as if setting the direction of your lives, the meaning of who you are, you have been called by name. Each of us is called by name. You, you and you, all of us here, myself included, all of us have been called by name. Not impersonally, but by name. Think of this, Jesus called me by name. His words are inscribed in our hearts, and we come to realize that they are written in the hearts of every one of us, as a kind of title that tells people who we are, who you are. You have been called by name. None of us is a Christian by chance, all of us were called by name. At the beginning of the story of our lives, before any talents we may have, before any shadows or wounds we may be carrying in our hearts, we were called. Why? Because we are loved. This is something beautiful. In God's eyes, We are precious children, and He calls us each day in order to embrace and encourage us, to make of us a unique and original masterpiece. Each of us is an original, whose beauty we can only begin to glimpse. Dear young people, at this World Youth Day, let us help each other to recognize this reality, may these days be vibrant echoes of God's call of love, for we are precious in God's eyes, despite the fact that sometimes our own eyes are dimmed by negativity and dazzled by distractions. Let these be days when my name, and your names, spoken with friendship by brothers and sisters of many languages and nations, resonate as unique news in history, for God's heart beats uniquely for you. Dear friends, if God calls you by name, it means that for God none of us is a number, but a face and a heart. I would like each of you to remember that many people know your name, yet they do not call you by name. Certainly your name is known. It appears on social networks and is processed by algorithms that associate it with likes and preferences, all of which is useful for market research, yet it does not begin to approach you in your uniqueness. How many wolves hide behind smiles of false goodness, saying that they know you, though they do not love you? They insist that they believe in you and promise that you will become someone, but then abandon you when you no longer matter. These are the illusions of the virtual world and we must be careful not to let ourselves be deceived. For many realities that attract us and promise happiness are later shown to be what they really are, soap bubbles, superfluous things that we don't need and that leave us empty inside. Let me tell you, Jesus is not like that. He trusts you, each of you, each of us, because each of us matters to him, each one of you matters to him. That is how Jesus is. That is why we, his church, are the community of those who are called, not of people who are better than others, no, absolutely not, but of sinners, called as such. Everyone. In the church, no one is left out or left over. There is room for everyone. Just the way we are. Everyone. Jesus says this clearly. 
when he sends the apostles to invite people to the banquet which a man had prepared, he tells them, go out and bring in everyone, young and old, healthy and infirm, righteous and sinners. Everyone, everyone, everyone. In the church there is room for everyone. Father, but I am a wretch, is there room for me? There is room for everyone. All together now, everyone, repeat with me in your own language, on Friday, August 4th, 800,000 people joined Pope Francis at the Way of the Cross during World Youth Day. The Pope explained, Jesus walks with the cross, he dies on the cross, so that our soul can smile. Sister Elvira Petrosi, known as the Sister of the Addicts, a beloved nun who founded the Senegal Community, for drug addicts, has died at the age of 86. Sister Elvira Petrosi, was born on January 21, 1937, in Sora, Lazio, Italy, and died on August 3, 2023 in Saluzzo, Piedmont, Italy. She was an Italian Catholic nun, member of the Sisters of Charity of St. Jean Antide Thorat. At the age of 86, surrounded by the prayer and affection of the entire family of the Comunità Senecolo, Mother Elvira serenely returned to the Father's home. Her earthly pilgrimage ended, at the House of Formation of the Comunità Senecolo in Saluzzo, where she lived the last years of her illness, cared for with loving attention by the sisters of the community and confidently surrendered herself to the merciful embrace of the father. Member of a particularly poor family, whose father was notably an alcoholic, she emigrated to Alexandria. During the Second World War, she claims to have never thought of learning to read or study. In 1956, when she was 19 years old, she decided to become a nun in the Congregation of the Sisters of Charity of St. Jean Antide Thorat. In July 16, 1983, she founded the first community of the Senecal in an old 18th century house, above Saluzzo, in Piedmont. She first wanted to create a community for marginalized young people, but the first to ask her for help are young drug addicts. The community is recognized by the Pontifical Council for the Laity as a private international association of the faithful. Currently there are 72 houses present in 20 countries of the world. It took some years before Sister's superiors granted permission, meanwhile Sister Elvira says she felt like a volcano inside, prayed much and never gave up hope. Through the doors of Community Senegal, these young people begin to feel hope and a sense of being, and family. The aim of the community is to renew the family, to help the families meet Jesus Christ, Savior, and Redeemer, also, to bring support, love, healing and faith. May she rest in peace. According to the Middle East Monitor, the historic Catholic monastery, Stella Maris, in Haifa, was forcibly entered by Israeli settlers. Israeli settlers who force entry into the site have recently increased, leading some to raise concern that the building will soon be seized by Israel. In the last five years, 157 attacks were committed on Christian areas, with the past year alone seeing 40 documented attacks against sacred sites, monks and nuns, the Islamic Christian Committee in support of Jerusalem and its sanctuaries, condemned Israeli extremists' other attacks against the Mar Elias Church and Monastery in the city of Haifa as barbaric. The committee said in a statement that repeatedly targeting the church to hold prayers inside by claiming there is a tomb belonging to a Jewish figure in its courtyard is a serious violation of holy places belonging to Palestinian Christians. The claim that there are graves for Jews in churches is a pretext for seizing and Judaizing them which is an aggression similar to what is being done in Al-Aqsa Mosque, the committee said. This new allegation comes in the context of the repeated attacks by Jewish religious groups targeting the Christian presence, desecrating and vandalizing Christian holy places, and attacking and spitting on priests and monks in the streets. Since Israel's new government, the most right-wing in the country's history, came to power in December, attacks against Christians in Jerusalem have become more violent and common. Wadi Abu Nasser, is an advisor to the Assembly of Catholic Ordinaries of the Holy Land. He told the Arab 48 News website last month that he blames the Israeli government for the increase in attacks on Christian sanctities and symbols. There are almost daily attacks that include spitting on monks and nuns, specifically in the old city of Jerusalem, and these cases have really become concerning, especially since their frequency has recently increased. Pope Francis met privately with abuse victims in Portugal and called on the church's hierarchy to treat them better. 
At the Apostolic Embassy in Lisbon, the Pope received a group of 13 people who had been abused by clergy in the past, according to the Vatican Press Office. The encounter was characterized by an atmosphere of intensive listening. The victims were accompanied by representatives of church institutions for the protection of minors. A statement by the Holy See Press Office director said, This evening, after concluding his institutional and ecclesial encounters, Pope Francis received in the nunciature a group of 13 victims of abuse by members of the clergy who were accompanied by several church organizations committed to the protection of minors. Mr. Bruni specified the meeting took place in an atmosphere of intense listening and lasted over an hour. The meeting followed Vespers in Lisbon's Geronimos Monastery during which the Holy Father called on clergy and religious to combat clerical abuse and always listen to the victims. In mid-February, a commission set up by Portugal's Bishops Conference published an investigative report according to which at least 4,815 people were abused in a church context between 1950 and 2022. The victims will be commemorated in a service at World Youth Day. Watch our program every Friday at 7:30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.